And we're talking about spring cleaning, but it has nothing to do with windows or closets. Instead, we're dealing with financial clutter and that big pile of records and receipts you have lying around. Our financial advisor, Ray Martin, is here to tell us what should stay and what can go. Good morning, Ray. Good morning, Wes. The stuff we're talking about keeping is really only a fraction of what we get totally, right? Yeah, you know, it is. And here's a scary factoid. Uh, household, family, uh, both spouses work, uh, have two kids, own their own home. They're going to generate over a thousand records, receipts. Jeez, statements, uh, all these di mortgage loan statements, their tax returns, over a thousand pieces of paper a year. If you keep everything over time, you're going to need to add an addition to your home just to <laughs> store all this stuff. You know, and it's not safe to do that out sure. And it clutters, makes it difficult to manage your finances. A lot of things, most things, you can throw away, and there's only a few things you need to keep for a limited periods of time. But it's also important, don't just throw this stuff in the trash. Right? Oh, you, be careful. This has your personal information on it. If you throw items away, it has your, you know, your name, your address, your, maybe your social security number, maybe an account number on it. Be sure that you destroy it, shred it, incinerate it, mm. destroy it in a secure fashion to keep you from being a, a, giving identity thieves the very thing they, things they want from you. Uh, you know, about 5% of Americans uh, are, are snagged by identity theft each year, so that's mm. rising crime. Be careful. Okay. It is tax season. How long, generally, should one keep their tax returns? I get this question all the time, and most people are under the perception that they need to keep their tax returns for six or seven years, and that's not the case. Most people only need to keep their tax returns for three years. Okay. That's the IRS period of limitations that the IRS ever calls you and says, hey, we want to do an audit of you. They're going to ask for three years tax returns. Mm. If you just completed your 2004 tax return, you can throw away 2001. The limited situations are your tax return for six years needs to be kept if you might have underreported income, which is easy to do if you had a, sold a piece of real estate for a big gain, got a big bonus, or exercised a stock option. Mm -hmm. And if you claimed a loss for a worthless security, a uh, stock you bought is completely bankrupt and you want to claim a loss for it, then you need to keep that tax return for seven years. But most tax returns, just three years. Okay, let's talk about receipts. You say most receipts you can toss, but anything with a warranty you should hold on to. You, you bought uh, items, whether it's a laptop computer, a DVD player, or you remodeled your home and bought a washer, dryer, a refrigerator. Keep the receipts for those purchases. They have the date that you purchased and staple them to the warranty card and keep mm. that in a file because it shows proof of purchase. Also, keep uh, receipts for deductible expenses uh, that you might have incurred for charitable contributions or, or interest or taxes and keep that with your tax file for the year that you're going to deduct that expenses or receipts for out-of-pocket health expenses that you're going to uh, deduct from a health savings account, for example. And the things we can throw away every month, the phone bill, the credit card bill, well, stuff like that. Well, the people that keep their utility bills, their phone, cable, TV bills, you know, for years years and years. You can throw that stuff away after you've paid it uh, and looked at it for the month and paid it. If you use Quicken or Microsoft Money and keep those records, uh, you know, then, then you know what you paid. If you ever need to look that up, you can throw away receipts uh, for credit card statements. After you review the credit card statement for accuracy, make sure you're not going to dispute any charges, then you yeah. can throw away that statement, too. Okay, every month we get a bank statement. Should we keep the whole thing? Well, you know, review it for accuracy of all your transactions, but you only need to keep the pages for a transaction that shows where you paid a tax-deductible expense or the images of your checks. Most banks Banks don't send you canceled checks anymore, so just mm -hmm. keep the selected pages and save that in your tax file. But after you review it, you can throw it away. There are a handful of items you recommend keeping for one year. They include paycheck, st paycheck stubs. Why? Yeah, look at your paycheck stub, uh, reconcile it with your W-2 at the end of the year, which shows the summary, and look carefully to make sure all the taxes you deducted are properly reported on your W-2, and the deductions that go into your 401k or 457 plan are properly uh, repeated there. Look at retirement plan statements. They usually have cumulative activity for the year if you get a quarterly 401k statement or an investment account statement. If they do, you can throw away the monthly statement, or if mm. they don't, then save them for the year until you get the year-end summary statement. Are there some things we should never, ever throw away? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, as far as these financial documents that you generate each year, keep statements like your mortgage statement, your mortgage note for the life of the mortgage. Keep receipts for improvements to your home because they add to the cost basis of your home for the lifetime that you own the home. Keep investment purchase confirmation statements when you buy st uh, stocks in it for, or mutual funds in a taxable account because mm -hmm. you need to keep that for your cost basis when you do sell the item. But remember, most financial institutions now will keep all this activity online for you. They'll keep a whole summary of it. If you ever lose these items, you can call them and say, hey, in the last six or seven years, they should have that in their records. Mm -hmm. And for tax returns, again, if you ever need to get a copy of those, you can send a $39 fee and a Form 4506 mm -hmm. to the IRS, and they'll send you returns for the last seven wow. years as well. So you can throw a lot of the stuff away and be Spring comfortable. Spring cleaning with Ray Martin.